What is up, my squirtle eyes? It is I, your king. Welcome back to more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. In the last episode, we finished off the Star and Special Cups, and today we're going to be heading on into the Retro Cup. So, we're going with Koopa Troopa today, and uh, I should have honestly should have saved the Wild Wiggler for him, but we'll we'll switch things up a little bit. We'll go back to a cart uh, for this guy. Um, I, I find it so... Okay, what is with the Mercedes-Benz promo? What the heck was that all about? Like, that just makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. And I find it so... Like, it's so extra strange because it's not even, like, one that makes sense to be affiliated with Nintendo in any way. Like, for crying out loud, Mercedes-Benz are kind of like a semi-luxury car. They're not even, like, a super car. They're certainly not Japanese-based. Uh, is it? Are they... German? I can't remember. I actually don't know where Mercedes-Benz is based out of, or at least originally was based out of, but not a Japanese uh, car brand. And yeah, they're kind of like a mid to upper end like car brand. So if it's supposed to be a promotion, can you really say that it's for the average Mario Kart player? Like what? It's like one of the weirdest, one of the strangest promotions, cross promotions I've ever seen in a video game ever. And it just like, it happened back on the Wii U edition and it's just persisted. And I just, I think it's so odd, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll play as one of them just for the memes at some point because uh, they are kind of hilarious. But here we go. Let's play as Koopa Troopa this time. Now, Koopa Troopa's kind of my boy. Um, in Mario Kart Wii and also, well, yeah, mostly specifically Wii, uh, Paratroopa, or no, no, is, sorry, Double Dash. Double Dash, uh, Paratrooper was my boy and Koopa Troopa because, you know, they had those item affinities uh, in those games and... Obviously, Koopa Troopa got green shells a lot, but uh, Paratroopa, and I'm going to blow that by not making it past these cows, um, Paratroopa would get red shells a lot, and red shells are just really, really nice regardless of the circumstances. The only time you really don't ever want red shells, honestly, is Mario Kart 64, because those red shells do not work in that game. They have horrible tracking. They are, they always are like, no, let's, uh, let's always beeline towards wherever the opponent is. I don't care if there's a wall in the way. I'm going for that, and they just, they suck. They're awful, but uh, in like something like Double Dash and Wii and this one, red shells are fantastic. So to be able to get a lot of those is always a huge bonus. Like, yeah, you got the special ones that wreak mayhem, like the big banana and the big Bowser shell, but red shells are just tried and true, man. I mean, that's like three easy uh, placement leapfrogs you can make just right off the bat if you just one at a time throw those at each and every single opponent in front of you. But uh, yeah, easy course here to start. Not too bad. I'm going to try to, ah, I was going to try to get over that, but I hit the grass at the last second there. Doesn't matter. Pretty breezy beginning course here for the Shell Cup. I'm not too worried about these uh, in particular, but some good reprisals here. Nonetheless, I actually do enjoy quite a few of these courses, even if they are on the shorter side. This is obviously supposed to be kind of the retro course adjacent to the Mushroom Cup, which is why we get GBA Mario Circuit. Now this, this is how you do a reprise because this is a very boring uh, race in the Game Boy Advance version, but they managed to actually make it slightly more exciting this time around. How do you do that? Well, of course, you make one of the sections of the track anti-gravity, and that's really all you need to do, and not that complicated. So this one's actually quite a lot of fun, and I'm a big fan of it. Which hopefully that doesn't come to bite me in the butt throughout this race as I get bombarded with items of some description. Let's just try to keep, there we go, up on the inside there. I did not mean to let go of that. That was a big accident. Oops. I thought I still had my finger on the trigger, but apparently not. And also, DK has a red shell. Let's try to get out and away from him as I kind of sidewind here. There we go. I knew he was going to throw that. He's got another one? Hold on, sir. That's bullcrap. Oh, he almost got me on that. There we go. All right, we have the lead. We have the lead. Let's try to get something else. This will probably be a coin, though. Uh, Yeah, I had a feeling. I really did. Well, let's just hold on tight to this for now. Here comes a red shell. I'm not going to let go this time. There we go. Use that so I can get myself a double item block there. I almost missed it, though. Okay, now we have two items of protection. This is good. This is good. I am not making my drifts very efficiently here. I'm actually going to go this way because there is a boost over here if you would so much I like to take it. It's a little bit too out of the way, though, to actually be worth it. Um, the I only found that direction actually worth it in the Game Boy Advance version because there was a long like string of coins that you could usually pick up there on that sidetrack. And given that you were not limited to the number of coins you could carry in that game, uh, trying to go for as high a total as possible was absolutely a part of the game there. So uh, makes sense that you'd actually want to go off the beaten path to get some of those at times. Well, we lost our banana, but at least I still have my green shell. 
and I should be good for the remainder of this course. I hit one of them? No, I did not. That would have been pretty funny if I did. There we go. Two courses down. On to the next one. We're just kind of breezing right along this uh, shell cup here. And uh, I'm going to try to get all through all these Grand Prix in like probably just two recording sessions if I can help it. Okay, Cheap Cheap Beach. Now we're talking. You'll want to talk about a course that I want to just go and party at is this one right here. Let me sit up in one of those huts right there. Hang out on the beach and sipping some freaking coconut rum. And I, you know, I'll just be in paradise while everybody else enjoys their race. Because this is, oh, it's just the vibes here. The vibes, man. They're so positive. I freaking love it. Oh, this game. This game. This is what actually makes me love this one is just looking at it. It's so visually pleasing. The, it's not just the graphics, man. The lighting engine that they used for this game is phenomenal. It's so good. A lot of people say, oh, it's lighting engine's easy. You just plug it into a thing and then it does the... No. No. There are so many different factors to how to make lighting work really, really well. That is beyond what just a computer program can instantly do. Like, yes, I get that it can, like, create the lighting effects for you. I understand how a lighting engine works. But there is so much more to be said about how you use saturation and tone and shadows to create an atmosphere and a mood that a computer cannot do that is actually very artistic, and Nintendo just nailed it with this game. I love it so much. This is like, because a lot of people like to lump uh, Deluxe and actually Super Smash Bros. Ultimate kind of together because, uh, well, they are kind of the quote-unquote definitive versions. They're the versions of the game that have persisted and carried the series for many, many years because they're the ones that Nintendo supported long-term the most. And I understand that. But I think this game does a way better job than Ultimate does. Uh, mostly because it is this one is a lot more, I think, fundamentally sound uh, and more representative of the series as a whole than uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is uh, of Super Smash Bros., for instance. But also just because uh, of this, for instance, just the way it looks. Like, Ultimate, I don't think it's actually all that good-looking of a game <laughs> in, in retrospect in comparison. I actually think it's kind of a, an, a little bit annoying to look at, especially as a fighting game. It's got too much going on for a fighting game, which I think is a bad thing, because a lot of times with fighting games, you want to keep things a little bit more clear and present and low-key, and you don't want to be constantly assaulted by bloom effects and things of that nature. But in a racing game, you can actually get used, you can get away with that as long as all that's important is on the focal, the center of the screen which this game, I think, does a very good job of, aside from when you're getting hit by items. But, of course, those are supposed to be disorienting moments anyway. Ultimate does not do a very good job of that. And actually, one of these days, you know, as an aside, I do plan on actually trying... I don't know how I'm going to make it work in a Let's Play fashion, but I really want to go over the Super Smash Bros. series as a whole and talk about that as well. That's probably going to be something I save for after all the Mario Kart uh, Let's Plays are done. But at some point, someday, I plan on doing that because that is definitely something that we need to discuss um, and I, I want to have a little bit of a conversation about. So, Toad's Turnpike, probably the most overrated and my least favorite uh, course from all of Mario Kart 64 is this one because it's so boring and actually almost made worse by its reprisal. Now, they, they obviously did some things to spice it up. You know, you can use these cars as ramps with the freaking snowboards or surfboards excuse me uh they threw more coins in here that you can go after you got these side tracks that you can go up on to uh, sp uh, spruce things up a little bit that's all fine and dandy and i don't really have too much of an issue with it but they also spaced out the vehicles more and in the 64 version the vehicles were really the only thing that presented any present danger um everything else is just kind of not really something you have to worry about um but now that they've spaced them out it kind of removes that danger and now you're really just going around a highway that's very boring and th this course sucks i don't like it i think it's really really lame it's what's well, probably one of my least favorites it, it's it's not a least favorite because it's a bad course it's a least favorite because it's very unexciting if that makes it or i guess not a course that i like actively hate like i, I can race on it all day it's fine it's just yawn big yawn to this one i don't know i, I don't know some people maybe this is their favorite i don't know why but more power to you, I suppose. It's just so, like, ugh. I would rather be racing on, like, the beginning Luigi's and Mario circuit than do this one. But whatever. Whatever. I don't know if that puts me in the minority. I also don't like the fact that I'm not very far ahead right now. 
There's, I mean, I could be snaking right now, but there's not really a whole lot else I could do in this uh, situation to make this more exciting. I mean, as long as I can just avoid a lot of shenanigans here, instead of taking the sidewall, I'm actually going to hit this here. And we'll skip across these. I guess going across the buses is something you can do that's, that's sort of, like, challenging and requires skill. But a lot of times you don't have the setup for that, so you're kind of just at the mercy of whether or not you're going to even have the opportunity to pull that off. But whatever, that's Toad's Turnpike. That is one of the worst reprisals in the game. It's just, I mean, not that the reprisal itself is bad. It's just a dumb course to reprise, in my opinion. But it is a popular one in the 64 version, so I kind of get it. People really liked it in that game. I personally never did, but whatever. And I love how the game is now spiting me by showing me only the highlights from this one. Freak, it wasn't even eventful. There weren't even any blue shells or lightnings thrown my way. It was so boring. But there we go. Shell Cup done. And we get to see our little three-star here, and then we can move on to the Banana Cup. And I bet you can't guess who I'm going to pick for that one. It's pretty freaking obvious. All right, here we go. On to the last cup of this episode. Let's go on and pick Donkey Kong. And for this one, we got ourselves a new cart, the Sports Coupe. Okay, cool. I might have to use that at some point. But for this particular race, I am going to be using... Where is it? I think I went past it. Where did it go? It's in here somewhere. Is it that? Oh, it is this one. Okay, I just it didn't look like it from the open screen. Okay, we're going to do that. And then we're going to try to get a uh, pretty high acceleration if I can. Sponge. I think I'm going to go with the off-road wheels for this one. And then I will go with... Let's go with the flower parasol. Sure, why not? And then into this one we go. We got Dry Dry Desert, Donut Plains 3, which is one of the better Super Nintendo reprisals. And then I know we also have the Donkey Kong Country Returns uh theme course from the 3DS, which is one of the best courses from that game. I'm not about to tell you that it isn't. I like that one a lot. So, and then I can't actually remember what the third one was, but whatever. I clicked through it too quickly. Let's begin. So, I don't actually... This this course is aesthetically cool. It's nice to look at, but it's kind of boring. I mean, to be honest, this is the thing about a lot of the GameCube courses, is a lot of them were designed to be very wide open, because, well, and this is what I mean about being further back in the pack, you just get hit by all sorts of crap. Um, they're very wide open because, you know, that game was, one, very, uh, it was very spread out. Uh, you had so many freaking things being thrown your way, if I can actually hit anybody with all that. Uh, you had so many things thrown your way that you needed a lot of space to work with, and also because the physics were so slidey in that game, uh, it made it very, very difficult to... Uh, get yourself some separation in space. Not to mention the game just overall moved a lot slower than other Mario Karts, so they were just like, eh, big wide open tracks more important than making longer tracks. And so it's one of those things where it's like, it doesn't translate well a lot to the future Mario Kart games, but the courses themselves still aren't bad. They're just kind of, you know, they, they just kind of stick out like a sore thumb because they clearly were made, and that was bad. They were clearly made under different design conceits than almost every other Mario Kart track, so they're definitely not the claustrophobic type at all. I mean, as claustrophobic as it gets is like, uh, what, what, what is it? The, the frickin' highway level, which I actually like that one a lot, where you have the bomb carts that you run into. Not the one with the bridge, but the, the other one, the one that's like set at nighttime. I always forget what it's called, but uh, let's drop those, just because I'm not going to be able to use those anyway as soon as I take a hit there. And let's try to use these as little things we can go across. We'll hold on to this red shell here. Is Wendy going to pass me? She's dang close, but not quite. Let's get the gold sparks there. Perfect. Okay, that's the combo that I needed right there. You can obviously chain those to do a little bit better than I've been doing. I've been kind of just taking it very, uh, very slowly throughout this course so far, but I'm still kind of getting used to this cart, which I've never actually used before, ever. But... Wanted to see how it would be how it would handle, and so far it's not too bad. But again, this is not a very good indicator because this course is super wide open. Let's take the other direction this time. I think the left is actually better just based on the angle, but I mean, based on distance, they're the exact freaking same. So it doesn't really matter which way you go. Um, okay, well, ah, why did I do that? Why did I do that? That was not good. Don't be throwing red shells. Thank you. Get, get windy out of here. All right, let's try to chain. No! Don't be taking my stuff. Well, that's a little bit of an issue for me. Okay, let's try to chain these together quickly here so I can at least... Oh, I missed my opportunity. Ah, gosh dang it. Didn't actually get the drift there. Oh, well, at least we can finish before the blue shell got to us. So first one down. Not too bad. 
Now it's on to Donut Plains. All right. Now, the circumstances I'm recording this under is kind of I iffy, too. So I, this is the same recording session as the very beginning of this series, um, doing it kind of all at once. I have a lot of time right now because, well, I am actually semi-bedridden at the moment <laughs> because I uh, had a big... Uh, uh, I slipped a disc, actually. Don't get old, people. Just don't get old. It's not worth it. Um, slipped a desk at work. I work a labor job. It's not like I did it while freaking carrot like printing papers or something like that and I bent weird. That's not what happened. I, I was actually doing like labor work. See, look at that. That red shell still got through my freaking triple bananas, man. They just don't do the trick. They really don't. Um, anyway, if I can get some ground here. I, I slipped a disc at work and uh, it caused a, it, it, it caused, a, it's pinching my sciatic nerve, which is, you know, very common back injury. Happens all the time, but it's a really severe one for me this time and it actually has kept me out of work for a little bit and I'm actually on like steroids right now just to work that off and hopefully get the nerves to stop up pinching me and the bulging to go away. So since I have all this time in the world, I decided, hey, why not? Let's uh, sit down and record some Mario Kart here. I'm also recording this like months in advance. So you guys are going to be seeing this probably about a, two months, two and a half months after I record these episodes. I think it's, it's going to be two months, actually, is what it's almost exactly going to be. Because it should start in the middle of January. And, well, this episode's out in February, but it should start in the middle of January. And then, um, yeah, go, for, go from there. And I'm recording this in the middle of November. So... Not to date these episodes, but I mean, at the same time, I don't really care if I date episodes too badly, especially in like circumstances like this. Like, is it really a big deal if I'm like, yeah, I'm recording this ahead of time? Like, who doesn't do that? Like, unless like I had a full time, like could make a full time job out of this, I would never attempt to record things and then release them within like the same week of each other. That's just not a practical thing to attempt. So, I don't know. It's not really a big deal to me if I'm like, yeah, this was all done in advance. Like, who cares? But all right, now on to the one that I actually wasn't paying attention to is next. Which level is this? It is... Oh, hey, Royal Raceway. I was actually speaking about this a couple episodes ago. Unfortunately, you cannot drive over to Peach's Castle in this one. They've gated it off. But still a very aesthetically nice looking level. I love the confetti at the starting line. I mean, it's a good course. This, this, is, this is one of the more memorable, iconic N64 courses, in my opinion. So there we go. You can get actually quite a few purple boosts here in the beginning. Don't try to hold on to it for too long, though, because it's not always worth it. Like, yeah, it's a super long boost, but sometimes it's better to just cut your losses and, and stick with the short boost if you can help it. Now, this part was always like a death sentence <laughs> right here because this jump in the uh, 64 game was actually quite precarious. And then there was like slopes on either side of the track that you could bounce off of and then you immediately lose all your momentum if you hit those. And that was always very frustrating. So that was actually a pretty difficult, uh, th this was actually one of the more difficult courses in Mario Kart 64, which is crazy to say, because it's just a circuit course, and these are very generic, but this one, uh, this one can get pretty rough, especially because the way boosts behaved in that game was also very strange, too, so it just never felt right. Can I get anything but a coin, please, like once? I would very much appreciate that. Well, it's not going to do me any good now, because that's all I can apparently seem to get on this course. Just coin, 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 coin. Ugh. That shortcut over there is really only accessible or even worth it if you have a mushroom, which I obviously do not have. I, okay, I've gotten bombs twice now. And I guess those work on the people who are directly behind me. But at least now I finally have a banana. Just avoid the daisy balloon. What's up, Toad? Hanging out in there. I'm going to immediately lose that, though. Okay, double items. Here we go. The good news is that when you get double items, you'll never get double coins. I don't. I think the game is specifically programmed to never do that to you. I like that. It's one like slight mercy with the coins that is uh, very necessary. And look, more lightning. But uh, speaking of coins, I just cannot seem to hold on to them in this course. So let me scoop those up really quickly. We should get a purple boost here. There we go. Beautiful. Just kind of chain those together. Yeah, definitely not worth going that way under these circumstances. Let's just hold on to this just in case another red shell comes my way. Which it might. I do have a green shell now to defend me, but just please no lightning. I would very much appreciate that. The good news is that whenever you fall on these courses, though, Lakitu always brings you forward rather than backward like he would do in previous Mario Kart games. So I'm not too worried about, like, getting knocked off of a cliff there. Like, I, I can mostly recover from that, no problem. 
It's kind of funny how they made falling off the course so much less of a punishment in this game, but I guess they want to keep it going. They want the energy high. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe definitely has that over most other Mario Karts. It's not... It's very low stakes, low punishment, but that's because it's constantly just like, go, 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 go. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's a different style. But here we go. DK Jungle, the last course of this episode before we move on to the final of the retro courses. And then after that's going to be all of the Wii U DLC courses, uh, ones that were added in the Wii U edition, but were already part of the vanilla run of this edition. Deluxe. So here we go. Let's do this thing. And this is going to be, uh, well, wow, Metal Mario has the same cart that I do. And I, oh, I thought I could get around that, but apparently I didn't pull in tightly enough. Okay, come on. Now these barrels, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be a tough one here. I'm just going to do that. Yep, definitely not worth trying to uh, hold on to that or, or aim it properly. I was more at risk of blowing myself up if I tried to do that. There we go. Okay. Good start. Gosh, I love Donkey Kong Country Returns. I need to get into into actually recording these games because they are just fantastic. Big fan of the Donkey Kong Country games, even though I'm actually terrible at them. That's the main the main reason I haven't uh, covered them on the channel yet. I suck at Donkey Kong Country. I'm so bad at it, and I've always wanted to not be bad at it, but I've got a lot of work to do if I ever want to get to that point. I'm so glad that that bump right there knocked me off course so bad that I legitimately couldn't recover. All right, come on. Let's get some ground here. I, I don't want to blow this here on the final race. I haven't lost a race yet in this Let's Play, and I would like to continue that. Oh, I could have used the Mushroom there, but missed that opportunity. Let's just use it there, kind of knock him off course if possible. I wasn't quite able to, but that's okay. I just needed to get a little bump there. All right. Oh, don't hit that banana. My bad. Okay, here we go. Coin. I'm just going to use that immediately because I am short on coins anyway. I'm going to actually go the outside track this time. It's just a lot easier, and you can actually get your drift uh, as intended on that one. If you can go on the inside courts, that's great. It allows you to do two jump tricks instead of one, but I, I'm just going to stick to the outside. It's also just, you know, obviously going inside on a turn is just objectively better because, you know, you're covering the turn in less ground. Can I make this? Yes, I can. Okay, good. See, I like how I was able to make that that time, but I couldn't make it when I got bumped into even when I was fully, when I wasn't shrunk. You know what I mean? Very strange, but whatever. All right, let's keep these at the ready. Froggies and the frickin' boo. What did I hit there? Did I, I understand why it took the banana. Why did I take damage? I wasn't anywhere near anything. I'm genuinely confused about that. Okay, that was weird. Very strange hitbox, whatever that was. All right, we got a bomb. Let me throw this behind me. Not that it's going to do me any good. Oh, and that is exactly why I did not want to go on the inside track there. I didn't actually know the mushroom was there, but... And lightning makes sure I can't have 10 coins, because of course. Thanks. Thanks for that. But all right, we did it. We got our three stars. We won all four races. That is the end of the Banana Cup. Guys, thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe very, very much. In the next episode, we're going to be heading on into the Leaf and Lightning Cups, the final vanilla retro cups here in Mario Kart 8. Before we move on into the Wii U DLC Cups, the Egg Cup, the Triforce Cup, the, what is it, the Bell Cup, and the Crossing Cup, which I'm very excited to get into those. But thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.